in a madrasa in Nottingham, in, a, in Flintham, in Newark. This was in the 90s. We came to a building that was an old, old RAF building that had been deserted for 20 years. So we were now going, coming into this and we were going to start using this as a madrasa. Now when we came there, one of our teachers, he said to us, he said, because we, we started off living in one corner and we we're going to slowly start using the rooms till the other side of the monster. Now this place had 120 rooms. Yeah. And it had about three different halls, massive. We had an east wing, a west wing, a middle sort of plot part. And we were in the east wing and we were just staying just in a few rooms. We were talking about literally about seven or eight rooms. And teachers said, they said, don't go to the west side to the west side of the building. I'm telling you, we, you know, you, you know, as young people, you dare yourselves, right? Yeah, so we said, come on, let's dare to go over there, right? So we were young, and we, we went into the west side in broad daylight, 12 o'clock. I'm telling you, it was spooky at 12 o'clock, forget 12 in the night. We were walking, and we were, we were holding our arms, and we were, we were walking together, about a good seven or eight of us, as we're walking, we can hear doors banging, bang, bang, creaking, things opening, you know, we just, just, just run. We were saying, you know, our kalimas loudly, shahadas loudly, what about that loudly, Allahu la ilaha illa wa alhaq wa we're basically running, yeah? Now, you can imagine, this place was really spooked up. And the chiefs warned us, you know, don't go over there. Now, what happened is one of these, um, there's this young kid, I'm not going to give you his name, he's probably grown up now, he's probably got kids now, all right? So I don't want to embarrass him when he... And some of you might confront him, but he was a, he was from up north and he, um, he was a kid at 13 years old, I'd say, from Bangladesh. He didn't know a word of English, forget anything else, right? He just knew Bengali and he was the most quietest kid you can imagine. Just quiet, just sticks to himself and that's it. And he's trying to become a hafiz of the Quran and he only has done one juz. So one day what happens is that he sort of strays off. I don't know, he goes over to the other side and he comes back. And no one sort of takes much notice of it, but he comes back and the evening when we're all sitting together and we're sort of reading. Uh, I, wasn't in the hall, I wasn't there in the hall at that time, but there were others who said that. But then I went over to the hall to verify this. So this is something that I have verified myself. What happened is that um, he came with his Quran up to his teacher. You can imagine a kid who's Lalu Pattu, who doesn't know a thing, single thing, yeah? He comes with, with a Quran to his teacher, puts it right in front of him, and he says to him, he says, test me. And he doesn't say it in English, he says it in Arabic. And this kid suddenly knows Arabic, right? So he says, test me. And, he, and, he, and his teacher looks at him and he thinks, is he having a laugh? In those days, you know, the beats were a common thing, right? I think, shall I just like, shall I just make spaghetti out of him, you know, like, yeah? So this kid just seems to know, test me, test me, any way you want, yeah? So the teacher says, okay, the Quran's closed. He said, okay, read from the 15th Jews. So, Subhanallah, the Yasra, we have been laying in the Masil Haram, in the Masil Aqsa, in the Barak, And the teacher looks at him and thinks, what is happening to this kid? So the, so the teacher, Teacher then tests him from another place, and another place, another place, and this kid now knows the Quran, and the kid challenges the teacher in speaking Arabic, and is this kid has got really good Arabic all of a sudden, right? And then you know when we heard this, we came over, and I, I, I specifically went, you know, met him, and I start, start talking, and he started talking Arabic. Weird. So uh, then we thought, okay, you know, whatever has happened, mir miracle of God, <laughs> you wait. Um, what happens is now this kid is acting really weird. Because he goes and he gets a hair clipper and he shaves half of his head and he leaves the other hair half as it is. Takes his hat off, walks down the corridor with half of his hair on one side, long, and the other half is completely shaven. Now kids are freaking out. Sasa! Jin, 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 jin. So then, you know, the, the teacher grabs hold of him and says, well, you've got to basically just, just shave the other half, so the shave, the other, the other half. So they've done that. Now, and he's acting all weird. He's doing things that, 
you know, sort of abnormal. So he then goes to bed, and okay, he's gone to bed. At about two in the night, all these kids, there's, there's six to a room, and there's three bunk beds in every single room. So there's sort of two on every sort of bunk bed. Two in the night, five of them from that room, from his room, come running down the corridor, yeah, banging on the principal's door, yeah. Jin, 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 jin. So the principal gets up, says, What's the matter? Jin, 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 jin. And the principal comes in, and there's only one kid sleeping. It's that one kid, the one that shaved his head, right? the one that knows Arabic all of a sudden now. Yeah, I said, What's wrong? He's nothing. So they go back. He said, go back, go back, puts the ball in bed, comes back. And he says, what's, you know, after, a little, after a little while, these kids are screaming back again. Down the corridor, knocking on his door, jing, jing, jing. So he said, what is it that's happening? They go, when we go into our bed places, yep. Imagine this guy's name is Imran. I'm just making, I'm not saying his real name, yeah. Imagine his name is Imran or something. They said that we hear all across the wall, something dragging its nails or whatever it is and saying, So basically, they just, just, just obviously leapt out of their beds, yeah, came straight to the principal. Now, this went on all night. Yeah, <laughs> him taking them to their beds, then basically coming back. So then the morning came, and the main sort of teacher, Mama Fadr Rahim Sahib, he called him over, and I was there serving breakfast. Now, what's common is in, in exorcism is that you would recite something, and when you recite it, you're able to, when you recite something, you know, some part of the Qur'an, then the jinn gets affected because they can't stand the, the, the Qur'an and then they will like leave. Or they will beg to leave. In this case, this jinn was a believing jinn. And this jinn was a half of the Qur'an. And this jinn knew Arabic. So when the teacher was reciting something on, and you know, trying to recite something to blow on it, the jinn inside this human being was reciting the adverse ayah to break the effect of that. It was not any common jinn that was in here and I'm sitting there watching this. So the Shaykh is reciting and this jinn is undoing whatever recitation is doing. And he was, you know, the Shaykh says, And this other jinn from inside will recite something else. So he's undoing whatever the Shaykh was saying. So after a while, when, they, when the students sort of left the, left the room, I asked the uh, Sheikh, the Sheikh confirmed that this is what he's doing. And then the Sheikh said that the only way to actually get rid of the influence is to take this young boy back to his hometown and to leave him there for one month. He said the reason why this has happened, and you know these guys, <coughs> I'm saying this, that you won't believe in this unless you deal with this. There are certain things that you will not believe in unless you deal with it. So if you've got unbelief in anything I'm saying, I'm saying to you that I'm making a lie witness, whatever I saw, I'm just telling you. You just need to start witnessing some of this yourself and you'll start believing in it. So the, so the, sheikh, the sheikh himself was able to witness some jinns. And he witnessed a whole group and a family of jinns that had traveled from outside and stayed in that west wing for a month. And he... He had this feeling that they were there only for one month. So he said, if this young boy goes to his hometown, then whatever, whatever jinn is, he said there's a young jinn inside him, who's a half of the Qur'an. And if he, stays, if he stays in his hometown, the boy stays in his hometown, then the jinn will automatically leave because his family are leaving this West Wing after a month. So, you know, we took him, we take, we took him home and as we were taking him, my God, we were, I, I was sitting next to him, on the on, on his left hand side in a car he was right in the middle he wanted to he, he was going to open the door when we were going 70 miles an hour he reached to open the the back door you know the car door and the teacher stopped him and the teacher gave him a good shouting and then he basically stayed there until we got to the place uh, we left him in his home for one month after one month he came back and he was the same docile kid you knew looked down while he walked Never knew a word of English or Arabic, and only knew one juz of the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul uhiya ilayya anna hustamana farum min al-jinn
فقالوا إنا سمعنا قرآنا عجبا يهدي إلى الرشد فامنا به ولن نشرك بربنا أحدا